All right, Heath, thanks for jumping on the show, man. We appreciate your time, especially after you uh, just got done at work. No problem, my pleasure. Um, I wanted to, since we had to reschedule, I just wanted to ask, I seen you at Third Man last week. Um, yeah. You got, you guys have done a collaboration at some point, right? I think Not I've yet. Seen some, oh, really? Not, Not yet. yet. I'm, 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 working on it. A, I'm working on it. I thought I'd seen a White Stripes record out there that was a... Uh, a wax mage variant but maybe that was just like a digital mock-up thing oh could have been yeah yeah we we haven't done anything with uh third man yet but i'm, I'm hoping to in the future yeah got yeah, a lot of friends be... over there so yeah and it's um i mean the two suit each other like it's very oh jeremy your camera cut out for a yeah second. i know no, very good. it came back okay <laughs> um it, the two suit each other very well, like Wax Mage and Third Man, just because you guys are doing stuff that nobody else is really doing. I mean, there's a lot of pr pressing plants out there and different things, but like I think Jack White has his own spin on things. You guys definitely have your own spin on things, so it would be really cool to see you collab. Yeah, yeah, I I hope to something for sure. And uh, how was the Ammo and Sniffer show? This is the best show. I, I love that band Ammo and the Sniffers are like like top tier for me. Like good old school Aussie punk, like really fucking throwing down. Uh, excellent high energy show, like just unstoppable. Yeah, it looks yeah, like they have that, their shit uh, together. Amy Taylor is just uh, the coolest performer. Such a great entertainer. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen him live, but like we... About a year or so ago, it felt like every episode we did, we were bringing them up because they were releasing new material at the time, and we kept telling people to check out this band, and whether or not people did, who knows, but awesome band for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I'm glad they're getting their due in the U.S., you know? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I, they seriously, play, go, still, go see them before they get to the bigger venues because yeah. it's happening. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, most definitely. I'm sure it'll be coming real quick here. Um, so just for reference, so for any listeners that know, go ahead and introduce yourself and what you do with Wax Mage. Uh, my name is Heath Gamoose. I'm the founder of Wax Mage Records, um, and uh, and I work at Gottegard Records since 2010 uh, as a press operator and currently uh, the production manager here at Gottegard Records. Okay. So Gottegard came first and then yeah. Wax Mage down the road. Yeah. But you still operate everything Wax Mage is pressed at Got a Groove, right? Everything Wax Mage is pressed at Got a Groove. Um, it, it's a pretty cool origin story, honestly. Is uh, I got in, started working in packaging, just saw those machines just pounding out vinyl, and I was like, man, I want to work on one of those things. And finally got my chance to uh, a couple months after I got hired. And um, learned how to press records, started doing those half and half records and splatter records. And then I just had a little bit of extra time at the end of a job and with stampers in and, and um, my wheels started spinning. I'm like, well, what happens if I put this in there and press it, you know, right. you know what happens if I layer stuff this way and press it. So um, Vince senior, who was the founder of uh, got a groove uh, is retired. Uh, but um, his son, Vince Jr., is uh, running a company now. But uh, Vince Jr. and Matt Early. But Vince Sr. let me experiment. He was just like, go ahead and do whatever you want to do. You know, you got 15, 30 minutes, then we got to move on to the next thing. So they just let me goof off until I started finding really cool stuff. That's awesome, man. Shout out yeah. to old man Vince. Oh, yeah, man. He's, he's the OG, that's for sure. So it was... Every time you're hand pouring everything, correct? Uh, so for me, there's there's hand pour, and then there's handmade. Okay. Uh, the distinction between those two is the hand pour is I'm using the hopper and the extruder, so I'm watching the screw spin that takes the material uh, into the into the machine, and I'm timing it so that I'm pouring 40 grams of vinyl each each time. I watch the screw spin empty, pour another 40 grams of vinyl. That's a hand pour for me. So I'm actually pouring the vinyl. The handmade, I'm not using, not all the time using the extruder, and I'm um, building designs in the front of the press um, okay. without using the extruder. So I'm, so I'm hand laying the vinyl. 
So when you were starting out, how much was, I'm assuming a lot of it was just trying out different pores, seeing what colors blended well together. Um, and I don't know this for sure, but do different colors melt at different temperatures and stuff? Or? They do. Okay. Uh, vinyl, all the vinyl colors have a different uh, heating and cooling parameters. So uh, when we first, when I first started doing it, you could actually hear an audible noise shift if you had, you know, a half and a half record, black on one side and white on the other, you can hear it every time it hit that line, wow. that hard line where it switched from black to white. Um, in layering these colors together, it's like having to find a, a that sweet spot where things not only operate correctly in the press, but you don't have an audible noise an audible shift in the noise floor when the records right. so it's it's been a lot of it took me years and years and a lot of time studies just to uh, even approach got and say can we offer these des designs to the cost to the client so yeah, yeah it's been a long long process because i've always heard the argument just like <clears throat> we do this podcast in the back of my record store so in the front of the record store there's always people hanging out people coming in we got a lot of regulars and this is an ongoing argument of does color affect the vinyl sound or is it the same material or so it's, it it's interesting to hear that if you had a direct split like that like it was there was a noticeable shift because a lot yeah. of times like when you get the record in the final production like i don't really hear much difference now i've seen some issues happen where like uh the edge of an outer dead wax like didn't fully pressed down so you got like a little chip in the edge or something like that mm -hmm. from like having a weird color pour right on that edge but a lot of times the sound i've never seen it really be, or heard it really be affected i think people are you know since we've been doing what we're doing and a lot of people are starting to do their own experimenting um i think collectively as an industry people that are making color records are learning how to work with the material on top of that i feel like um, the manufacturers of the materials are learning how to give it a little more viscosity and, a, and a lower the noise floor just because we all want to stay in business. So um, right. we're, every, everyone works together and to try and figure out how to, you know, decrease noise floor issues and, you know, how to make a good flowing vinyl. And, and I think right now the biggest push is to find uh, vinyl that is um, more, uh, eco-friendly um, so and so we're everyone is still working on that there are a few places now that do some eco-friendly vinyl um, but I we haven't gotten to experiment with it yet but we're, we're trying to get a hold of some to try it out okay anyways we were talking about the sound difference um, how much like failure did you have as far as the records go like do you you already have an idea of kind of how you want them to look in mind so how many times does it take you to really get like how you want it to be so uh i i've uh, actually created a, i call it uh a zen and the art of color vinyl is a little cookbook or a cookbook i call it uh it's got um all of my designs in there and heating and cooling parameters, how to build them, why they're built that way. And um, so uh, at first, it was very high scrap on, just yeah. in learning, like uh, massive. Um, and then uh, eventually, like now we can get through, as long as the press is running well, and the operator is familiar with the design, there's uh, under 5% scrap on the custom work that we do, which Damn. is amazing. Yeah, that's yeah, impressive. That is fucking insane. It's like yeah. nothing. Honestly, yeah, there's yeah, yeah, yeah. Out there. and that's exactly where we want to keep it too. So, yeah. but it's a it's a it's a large learning curve. So when I bring a, a new person in to to learn how to do this stuff, um, it's it's a lot to learn. How long did it take you to go from learning to like? How long's the training to learn how to actually press a record? Because there's how many plants like in. In uh, Michigan, in or not, I'm sorry, Michigan, in the United States, there isn't even that many pressing plants. So to be trained on one, I'd imagine it would take some time. Uh, there are so many different kinds of presses, um, and there's new manufacturers out there that are, that are uh, making presses too. And uh, 
We here, we work on uh, Hamiltons that are from the mid 70s. And then we have a couple of SMTs that were made in the mid 80s and then uh, two more hybrids that are uh, kind of Frankenstein together between the Hamiltons and the SMTs that are PLC driven. Or like and in-house then, kind of Frankenstein monster thing? I mean, they're not monsters. They're actually beautifully really? running machines. Okay, I yeah, yeah, it yeah. sound like they're like, oh, <laughs> but they're, they're not. They're actually our highest uh, performing machines right now. Uh, just because they're they're PLC driven and not analog like the other ones. Oh, okay. And uh, in those modifications, uh, we made a lot of we were able to make modifications. You know, just because of watching these older machines run, we're like we we'd like to upgrade this, we'd like to upgrade that. So they yeah. they actually run really really well. I was gonna say you um, find all those efficient points. Yeah. So the the but the learning curve, I say, um, when I first hire a press operator here, I'm like. Uh, I understand that you're not going to know anything about what you're doing. Uh, we've created these manuals here, so it's easier to learn. Um, and I say, I'm not going to let you fail. I'm like, ask all the questions. I was, guys will be able to be on their own after about a month um, just to get the rhythm of things. And then uh, after about a year, I consider you not green anymore. Um, but you can ask any press operator in any plant, uh, if they're worth their salt, they'll tell you they should learn something new every day. Um, yeah. So it's you remain teachable, and um, most folks say you're an expert after ten years, but I still don't feel like one. Like even I still learn something new every day, and a lot of times I learn something new from the new guy. So yeah, yeah you get sometimes. Um, sometimes there's like a happy, habits. a happy accident that happens too. That like something clicks, and you're like, oh, I could have done this with this or whatever. But or oh, yeah. yeah, too like. Younger guys have different habits than what the older guys do, mm -hmm. um, and that happens in every field too. So, like, oh yeah, I think the best people in their field of work are always the people who are willing to know that they don't know everything. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a key. Uh, stay humble. <laughs> yeah, because it's like that. Yeah. I mean, it's like that at the record store. Like, I've had a lot of people that have come in that try to tell you this, that, and the other about a stereo, and I know when I'm right or when I'm wrong, but when it comes to, you know, stereos, records, collectability, like, some of them old dudes, or even some of the young guys, like, they tell you stuff that you would have never even thought about or known or anything, so mm -hmm. I'm always Absolutely. open to learning something. There's new. so much fucking shit out there to learn, too. Oh, I know. It's exciting, it's, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's just, you know, I'm going back to school this year. It's like, I, I wish I could do that for a million different things and get paid for right. it, but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> uh, so what is the smallest run of records available to the public that you guys have done for... A hundred records. A hundred uh, records is our minimum. That's what I thought. And then... Uh, but I didn't know if maybe you're like, well, since we have all the access to a plant, we'll just kick out these five really cool ones that are super limited. Man, I, I wish it was. I wish it was, we could do that, but yeah, it'd be a lot uh, of resources. Can't. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it costs. It basically costs like two thousand dollars just to get everything together and set up. You might as well get a hundred records for another five hundred bucks. You know right, what I mean? Right. So, do you do represses of? We do. Okay. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was gonna say, um, like, of anything that was uh, for an artist, because do you do the same colored repress, or do you incorporate a whole new thing, or is that kind of up to whoever the record's for? It, it's up to the to the label or the artist that's getting the repress. Um, I always my advice to folks: if you are getting a repress, uh, do something different. Um, yeah. You know, either either on the jacket art or the label art or um you know make a different color vinyl so i didn't know this until i was doing some research for the episode but you guys did a collaboration on record store day with uh, a dead milkman record where you randomly put how many was it uh, i think we made a <clears throat> we pressed a total of 150 Okay. I'm positive that 125 got out there into the world. Maybe a little more than that. I'm I'm not sure exactly how they did it, but yeah, that was really cool to work on. Because hey, it didn't even say. I don't remember oh. there being a hype sticker about there it. Was, nothing nope. like it was a complete surprise. There's probably still some out there. Now you just cracked them and put your own in <clears throat> and then resealed them. Is that how? Well, that what we did. So they had the bulk of their run done at Studio Studio Four Vinyl. Um, 
and I worked with um, Matt Teacher at the Giving Grove, and um, they, after I pressed the records, we we created the designs. Uh, they had some really cool like inner sleeve like foil stamps and uh, hand numbering stuff in there. So we had like there was like a one of one, I think a one of fourteen, a uh, uh, one of fifty, and then uh, one of a hundred, um, some something like that. Um, but uh, so the inner sleeve was something completely awesome and totally unique. Um, but from the outside, they did all the assembly at Studio Four Vine. So I just sent sleeved records from okay. Guy Groove to to where they were assembling everything, and they would just randomly insert them in a five thousand piece run. That's so, so cool. like a, yeah. So for that Bucky Fellini record, uh, there's probably still some out in the wild. So you, if you pick one up at a record store, um, you might you might get lucky. Yeah, I had two of them here, and I actually know one <laughs> of the guys that bought one, and now I'm kind of like, fuck, I wish I had his number so I could be like, did you get it? And he'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, I might not even know. <laughs> do you still have a Bucky Fellini one there? No, I do have... We I was going to be a, like, open it, yeah, open it. <laughs> we do have an original copy of the record here that's Rad. autographed by the band that's hanging nice. up like above our... It's behind the counter, like way up, so only Very we cool. can see it, but yeah. Right. But yeah, I didn't know about that, and I was like, damn, that was a really cool idea, and I'm sure with how resellable Record Store Day th things are, like that one with how resellable Wax Mage pressings are, like I'm sure once people realize it, the resale on that's probably insane. Yeah, I, I don't even know what's going on with that one. Some of the resale on some of the Wax Mage customs I see out there is absolutely insane too. I'm just like, holy moly. Yeah, like, I went I down no a idea. Reddit hole that was insane like when I was doing a little research before doing this, and it just people like going crazy over like trying to get the first press of this one or that one and then there was like maybe a couple of other labels that people were talking about that do crazy yeah. variants like a uh, wax vessels and yeah one. what that yeah. Is, that's what they wax said vessel. but we i mean this went on, for that and, wax on and, and like, yeah. i kind of went for hours i'm just like yeah it's like a whole nother sub genre of collecting and really t you know i found a little another weird community of people you know what i mean yeah it's it's pretty cool though i, I gotta be honest i had no idea um, when I started doing what I was doing, that it would turn into something like this. So it's really, I, I feel honored uh, that I get to to continue to do the work that I do, not just for Gotta Groove and not just for Wax Mage, but for, you know, like Wax Vessel, Cadaver Records, Soul Step Records, Warrior Death Records. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many I could, so many I could mention, but like repeat folks that come through here real gun records now is is like uh like new and just like getting customs each and every time with all of their runs and i'm just like i just did some runs for real gone for the donnas and i'm just like holy shit yeah, i'm making I cool seen, records yeah, for, for the donnas like are donnas. you kidding me yeah. Yeah, the donnas dude, it's, ones, yeah. it's crazy man. yeah 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 so, so aside uh, from like the dead milkman record store day collab the donnas <laughs> collab what are some of the other kind of crazy collabs to you that you've done man um so when i as far as like collaboration stuff I, I don't often do a whole lot of that this has more been recently of just me reaching out okay or other labels or artists reaching out and um you know we're trying to do stuff together i, I do a lot of stuff for uh our local music scene so a lot of the records that that I put out with uh, my uh, business partner Ty. Now I just brought him in. He does a lot of the, a lot of the heavy wax slinging that I used to do, um, but uh, he's a uh, solid gold dude. But um, we we both really try to work with a lot of local artists, and some of what we do is um, we'll say, hey, can we put out your record? Uh, and folks are usually like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but our metric is that we do a run of 225 records. Uh, we give the artist 100 records uh, free and clear. Uh, they can do whatever they want with them. And then the, with the 125 records we make are all handmade ones. Um, and we sell those on our platform and that helps us pay for the run and then backs us up a couple of bucks to, to do another job or like get some t-shirts or like have some merch or whatever or, 
or travel to, you know, like we went to making vinyl this year. We went to Austin for record con and, um, um, and we're just, but basically you're giving an artist $3,000 worth of record to do records to do whatever they want with. So, yeah. And I, I feel like it's a huge help. I've played in a lot of bands coming up and, Man, peanut butter and ramen noodles gets old fast. Fuck you know? yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So if somebody if somebody ever approached me and was like, "Hey, do you want a hundred free records?" I'd be like, "Yes, I do." Yes, please. <laughs> so yeah, but um, uh, collaborations. We we have a few irons in the fire right now. I, I, we're doing some work with Green Witch Records uh, out of New York, um, and uh, on those collaborations, uh, we've done Pale Diane as a release. That we did for them bloody knives is about to uh, come out we did pearl earl with them um uh we're still ironing out some other deals right now that i can't talk about but yeah that's ho- fine hopefully we get those two i'm just gonna say japanese noise artist <laughs> awesome okay <laughs> trying to uh... but, but and that's the other thing too is we don't have any genre specific yeah, Anything. You guys are if, really... we, if we like it, if we like it, we'll put it out. And yeah, that, I fucking appreciate I like all the that. genres. Yeah. yeah, and that's how that's how we do our podcast too. Like, yeah, we have a, a ripped off negative approach logo, but um, mm-hmm. we don't only do hardcore stuff or like metal stuff. Mm-hmm. We, we try to branch out into other things. Now, some people are a little unreachable, so we end up doing a lot more like DIY sort of independent punk bands, which we love. And I'm not saying anything wrong with that, but. We try to really mix it up. So I like that about your label, how you don't put it out if you don't like it. Um, and that, that's kind of how we operate, too. Like, yeah. I'm not going to endorse your new record if I don't like it. I'm not going to say it's bad, but uh, I'm just not going to be able to have a whole conversation about it. Sure, yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. right. We're not going to promote it if, you know what I'm saying, if we're not all about it. Yeah, you got to love what you're doing, man. Yeah. First and, and foremost. One of the um, artists that... I noticed looking into this that I like was that Uno lady. Oh man, she's such a good friend yeah, of mine. That shit is fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. I like it's that. It's just a lot. it's yeah. just her, and to see her so perform nuts. live is is amazing. What yeah. what she so does with, shout out with to the just Uno her lady. voice. Yeah. Hell yeah, Krista Krista Ebert, big love. Yeah. <laughs> so that. I think it I, said, I that like, her cool. Instagram says, like, she's, like, a one-woman ghost orchestra or yeah. something like that. Yeah. It was, she I, truly is. Yeah. That's she just shows awesome up with a suitcase that her. unfolds and, and, and everything she needs is just spills out of it. And then you have literally have an entire opera and an orchestra at her fingertips. Damn, that's it's unreal. Awesome. Yeah. I like that stuff. Like, it sounds... You know, it's got little parts of this, that, and the other in there, but it's definitely like 100% her own thing. Like that's all. Oh yeah. All yeah her I've never heard anything there. like that. I mean, I guess you could say it sounds a little like this and a little like that, but yeah, you can do that with anything. Exactly. Oh yeah. For the most part, like it's it's her man, and I really like it. Yeah, me too. Anyway. Yeah, I had an opportunity <laughs> to <laughs> like just dick or I her, dude. This shit sounds good though, you know. <laughs> I had an opportunity to put out a, a 10 inch for her. Um, and that the unique part about that 10 inch is that I actually went to uh, Robin at Red Spade Records, who's a lathe cutter in, uh, in uh, Canada. She's also a good friend of mine. She runs, uh, helps to um, run Women in Vinyl, uh, which is a very cool podcast if you want to check out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Promo I another know. podcast. Women in Vinyl is that. like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. So informative. Um, and uh, just like really in- inclusive with everything that they're trying to do. Uh, shout out to uh, Robin and Jen from Women in Vinyl. But um, so with that 10 inch for Uno Lady, I had Robin cut it, uh, it was a single side. And then on the other side, she hand etched these little whales on it. And then I sent the records to Dave Norman from Zegma Beach Records. And he does this thing where he dips, uh, he's dipping the vinyl in like uh, how they used to make old pages in books where it's just kind of like this flow of color. Mm-hmm. I don't know how else to explain it. But it's he almost dipped like plastic dip kind of. Yes. Yeah, exactly that. And so he dipped each one of those blank sides with the etching on it. And it so it looked like the little whales that uh, Robin etched were swimming That's in these fucking blue amazing. waves. So, That's so awesome. I think we only did 50 of them. And, uh, and uh, I had to get 10-inch 
jackets made at another place called uh, Little Elephant. Uh, they're also lathe cutters, but they do small run jackets if you need any. Uh, and they're out of Toledo, but it was the one of the. It's the only wax mage release that I didn't. I didn't make. I just brought all of my friends in who I love their work. And um, is that the just only ten inch? Compile. Pardon? Is that your only ten inch? Yeah. Oh yeah. Man, we don't that's press got, ten inches. That's here. like a holy grail now. <laughs> <laughs> Even now, I'm like, do I did I take one of those? Home? Yeah. You gotta think about it. That's cool, yeah. though. That's cool. I mean, notoriously, 10 inches don't do that well. No, I know. People are mm-hmm. all, they're almost confused by them when they see them. They're like... <laughs> I know, dude. It's funny how people get like, all like... Because some people are like, oh, 7 inch, like, you know, a handful of people know, a handful of people yeah. don't know. But when you see a 10, they're like, wait a minute. Like, I know that was bigger. Like, right. It just, <laughs> it just throws them off. But I've, have, you, have you seen a 3 inch record? Yeah. Yep. I've seen some of them Zarface three inches that they did yeah, yeah. and stuff. Um, I have I a five and... inch that's pretty funny too. Yeah, so... I have one that's a uh, that's a split with uh, Anal Cunt and um, Child Bite. It's a okay. five inch is... or three. Inch. Yeah, it's not it's like this little tiny. Like I lose it at home sometimes. <laughs> it's so small. <laughs> like I'm like, oh, I want to show Where's you this unique thing, and I'm like, where the fuck did it go? I don't even know where it went. Where's my anal cunt? Slayer did, <laughs> Slayer did that like small seven inch box set, but each record was 6.66 inches. So nice. they were nice. slightly, slightly under seven inches. That's pretty silly and fun. That's really silly and fun. I agree. Speaking of etchings, though, I seen, I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before, um, on you guys' Instagram, what looked like a plate for a wax mage etching. Yeah. Oh God! Hold up. <laughs> you got it right here. Oh, nice. Uh, we are about. I think I'm gonna do a. See if I can talk the president of GGR and let me do a 50 piece run. But uh, yeah, we just got it in. Damn it! Uh, Black Matter um, mastering did oh, it that's for so me. Dope. That is fucking so, sick. Yeah, so there's like these little ghosty eyeballs in the back. Yeah, of I see. it, and then I had my uh, graphic designer uh, Linda Holton design uh, a center label for it. Um, but so this is like my logo, right? So for the center label, it's it's just that eyeball. Oh, it's so fucking oh, okay. sick! So it's just, I can't wait! I can't wait to see what it looks like. So it's a real um, small cut down center label. Oh um, uh, no! Uh, it'll be this whole thing, oh, it'll be but the it's whole just thing. it's just the whole label, but just the eye. Oh, yeah. okay. Because that I've eye seen, image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a couple of presses where, like, on that label where the eye is, just in the center there, that maybe like inch that's right there. Yeah. Like there was an Aesop Rock record that he put just that tiny little spot on the center there. Oh, um, nice. I've seen like some clear label center labels like that that went through on both sides of yeah, the record. Love that that was pretty cool. One. So when you started Wax Mage, did you plan on starting it as your own custom pressing thing, or was it a record label first? I've always wanted to, I, even before I got into bands, I was like, man, I, if I had a million dollars, I'd do a record label, because I just right. love music, and I, and I love what I love, and I'm just like, I would hear something local, and I'm like, man, that needs to be in the world someplace. Right, somehow. right, right. Yeah. Um, so that was always my initial passion to do that. So, honestly, it'd be really cool if I could be like a, a full on offer tour support and, you know, recording studio shit. I wish I could get to that level someday. I don't know. I got a real late start, so I might not make it. <laughs> never but, uh, say never, brother. I'm never not saying never. Cause I keep hiring folks that are 20 years younger than me. So <laughs> yeah. somebody's going to do it. Somebody. I'll get it started, but somebody's got to finish it. But, um, I, uh, I never th- I, I wanted to start a record label and I, I wanted to put out music. Um, and uh, I, I don't know, everything just kind of serendipitously lined up yeah. in life. Like I didn't start work. I'm 53. Damn, really? Uh, you know, like sex drugs are man. Yeah, Make thought, sure you I moisturize. Thought, <laughs> I thought you were like our age. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> no, man. Um, but I, I got into pressing vinyl and you know my late 30s uh or probably like 40 years old so and i just immediately knew 
when I walked in the door, I was like, this is where I need to work. And I just, and then I quit all my bands. I was like, see ya. Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to eat all week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I've always wanted to, I, I think uh, the Instagram got started in 2015 uh, where uh, Sarah, who's out, I was working with, uh, Sarah Barker, we first uh, started working here together. And uh, she was like, you should start an Instagram. You know, me not thinking about it. She's very young. <laughs> she was like, you should put this in the, out in the wild. I was like, okay, let's start an Instagram. And so we did, and it just kind of s- snowballed from there. Perfect. Um, yeah. I've always uh, thought that the trick to Instagram is having repostable content, and you guys have, like, highly repostable content. I actually have someone finally managing that for me now, um, which is a huge de-stressor for me. And now I get to work on other stuff, but, um, yeah, that's a whole thing on it. I know. I run, I run our podcast, Instagram, our record store, Instagram, Mm -hmm. the record store, Facebook, my own stuff, et cetera. So, I mean, just that social media aspect of things like it's, I would, I would leave work and and then I'd be home sitting on the couch for fucking three hours answering, you know, like this. I'm just, Oh my God. And it's still work. (laughs) Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it is. It's definitely work. People are like, you're always on your phone. I was like, I'm trying to monetize this shit. man. Yeah. Exactly, dude. I'm not playing a video game here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not candy crushing. Like, yeah, no, for sure. I'm trying to sling Add to some the records. candy crush. I need to room. You know? <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, man, that's fucking awesome, though, that you're just like, you know what? I want to eat all week, and I found what I want to do, you know? Yeah. I got really lucky. Uh, not a lot of people get to to follow their passion, in, in a sense. But I, I don't think I ever didn't i was always just you know getting work so i could keep making music or being involved right in music somehow so but then to find a job that revolves around music i was just like especially okay, like it. in ohio of all places <laughs> like it's a very it's not like the music center capital of the world or anything like that it like, should be I'm <laughs> Like, I mean, even, like, Detroit has more musical history, I oh, would say, yeah. than Ohio. And... Definitely, big time. Detroit's one of my favorite places to visit, uh, hands down. Yeah. yeah. I, it's, there's a whole, like, energy when you're in there, like, just oh, yeah. especially, like, I haven't gotten to go to the Motown Museum yet, but I've done, like, a and virtual tour thing. I always get a little awesome. misty when I go in there. Yeah. That's, oh, on yeah. My, that's definitely on my to-do list. Shit. They have the same, they have the, uh, they have a... Uh, a candy machine in there okay. that uh, has, a, I think it's a payday candy bar has been in the same slot because that's when Stevie wonder was a kid and he would go in there. He would always know to count the knobs over and that was the one he wanted. Oh, no shit. <laughs> so they never moved it. It's still in the same spot to this day. That's funny. Damn, that's awesome. Watch the new guy. I don't know if the candy's in. fresh or not. But... No, probably not. <laughs> the new guy there goes in and buys it and just like, oh, eats it's just, it. And, like... It's just a bar of ants. <laughs> that kind of makes me think of um, another question that I kind of had for you that's kind of just jumbled together. But aside from pressing your normal colors different colors swirls spiders blah 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 have you ever tried pressing anything funky like that like i i've i saw where there was microchips in one pressing something inside of a record yeah yeah Yeah, yeah, we we do a lot of inlays um Uh, so my my rule with the inlays is that they have to be 0.7 millimeters thin or less Okay. Um, well, actually, more or less between the point, item that uh, you're inlaying has to be that. Yeah. Okay. Um, just because there's only so much, a record right. is only so thick. Right. So I'm not doing stuff like um, how you see the liquid filled records and stuff like that, which is very cool. Uh, but that's actually two records that are RTV together. Yeah, it's basically. And then they're able to disc. put stuff inside yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, with the inlays that I do. Um, I think a record in total is like 1.4 millimeters uh, thick. And um, being able to layer stuff inside of there is, we, you only have so much room inside those dies or else it'll poke through the grooves, it'll damage the stampers or it could damage the dies. Uh, I've done stuff like um, utility blades um which turned out pretty cool um 
you, the boss doesn't like when I put metal in the records. You're probably like, uh, freaking out. Oh, yeah. He's like, ah, oh, these dies are $10,000. <laughs> I'm like, don't worry. I'm a professional. <laughs> but uh, um, I'm only a professional because I've ruined some shit. <laughs> so, yeah, you only get good by fucking shit up, right? It's true. It's true. It's, you know, there's a lot of things. Out, like I tell my guys out there, I was like, well, you're probably only going to make that mistake once. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, if you do it twice, we're going to talk. <laughs> but um, the... Uh, yeah, any kind of fabrics. Um, I tried pretzels. We, I've tried coffee. I've tried things. I found that things with um, oils in them already are not going to work uh, because the PVC has, you know, um, has a little bit of uh, oil in it. Right. Basically, just in its chemical makeup, so it doesn't play nice with, you know, like coffee grounds that has a natural oil in it, or, you know lemon rhymes or stuff like that um but I wonder, these are fun they're I complicated we were talking fun. last week and um i was wondering if you put like say pennies in one around it would and you know when you'd spin it how would that centrifugal force fuck with your record i don't or, know or would it i mean i don't know that's i you're the guy you're the guy i'm asking uh I've, i don't think that it money? would just because it's on a, it's already on a that quarter inch center pin. Yeah. On your turntable, so I don't know that necessarily it would fuck with it. Yeah, because there's. But not I've a thought lot about, I thought about that with kind of liquid locked. filled. Yep. Yeah, yeah, with liquid filled with the force kind of like. My yeah. thought yeah. was. Shot in it. My thought was I'm if you sure. did anything like a, a quarter, a penny, anything that has, it's not a substantial amount of weight, but it's a you know a gram or something, whatever a penny weighs. I don't know, but. I would think you would have to offset each one. Yeah, that's what I was to thinking me, too. But maybe not, since you know you brought up it being already on the center spindle of a turntable, so that kind of eliminates the centrifugal force, since there's nothing moving, like yeah. out, outwards. Like with a liquid-filled record, you have everything moving outwards as it's spinning. But if the penny's locked in there, now if the penny was loose. Then no, I, not maybe, loose. Maybe it could do. Something I guess I different. was just, you know, but then like it would fuck with the sound altogether. When, yeah, when people like, you know, do do it on their bar tables and fill yeah, it. Yeah, and in. they fill it with epoxy or whatever. Yeah, and I yeah. just you said point seven, and I was wondering. I mean, I don't know how thick a penny is or a, a I dime. Mean, neither. I, I was. I'd be really I was impressed right. if you did, like just off the top yeah. of your head. I'm like, damn, that's a, that's a stored down fact you got I've, there. I've done some coins before, but they weren't. Um, I'm looking right now to see if I got any pennies laying around here, but I don't. <laughs> but you have you have good pressed, problem to have. <laughs> you have pressed um, money into albums before. Uh, paper money, yes. Yeah. Uh, not no. not uh, coin. Not coins. Um, God, now I'm going to be thinking about this until I can measure one. But uh, <laughs> sorry, dude. I have I've used like metal discs before uh, for Heathen Hand Records. Okay. They had like a custom custom like. The, the, we call them coins. Yeah, they were probably a nickel size, but they had just some etchings in them or whatever. That's cool. Uh, guitar picks I've done before. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, those turned out pretty cool. Some of the thinner guitar picks, like, like kind of got heated up enough and stretched out a little bit, so oh, they were just like okay. really big picks. Oh, yeah, but um, yeah, a lot that. of the nylon ones just kind of held their shape and they're just sort of floating around in the... I wanted to ask you before we got a little sidetracked earlier do you happen to know how many bands you have on your label by chance a lot of people uh, I've asked this are like I don't know <laughs> well um I keep track of all of the uh, matrixes numbers that I use so I could pull up a really rough I haven't updated it in a minute I've put a few more jobs in the system but uh, it's looking like I've been putting records out since 2015. I took a little hiatus. There's probably about 35 bands. Okay. That we that good. we put out. Yeah, that's yeah. badass, man. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I never really, really cool. I never <laughs> it up before. <laughs> yeah, real fucking cool, bro. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it takes a minute to like build that catalog. So, and I feel like a lot of people in that they don't reflect on it until somebody brings up the question and like you just yeah, and I, like, I never, damn, that's really cool. I never thought about it until now. So yeah. yeah, now now it makes me want to work on that spreadsheet some more. <laughs> yeah. Like when when we did a hundred, we've done over a hundred episodes now, and I'm like, oh damn, wow, it doesn't even feel like yeah, it. it just, like, that means you're having a good time. Yeah, for sure. We do yeah. have a good time. That's the whole reason we do this. So. Oh yeah. But um, I asked if you could bring along some variants to show yeah. off. So if you brought some off, that would be awesome to see. see some. I, good I stuff. did. Um, this is one of those inlays. I hope you can see it, but it's got oh. like a foil in it. Yeah. And uh, the other side is pretty, a little more simple. But um, let's see who this release is for. I'm mishandling this record because i literally just pulled it off the wall in the other room <laughs> uh, so when we have sometimes we have records that don't always uh pass our this is how you should handle a record y'all like this no groove touches okay yeah. nice and easy flips on that i've always but, wanted to make a video of that like showing people because i've seen some bands oh i know like unboxing. oh they're, and they're just like yeah, look at how cool this is and I'm and like, they're like <laughs> fucking like frisbee in it and i'm like oh yeah. my god but uh, I see I see people handle it like this a lot too. They'll pull it out of the jacket and I'm yeah. like, ah, yeah. it's this way, this way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, my apologies if I'm mishandling them because I know that they're scrap records to me. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna do better for the podcast for you. Some but yeah, this some is internet nerds gonna tear you apart. Oh, uh, no, bring it, <laughs> bring it, <laughs> bring it. Yeah. Uh, I've been handling records since like the you know the '70s, so come talk to me about it. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, this is uh, that one of those foil inlays I thought was really cool. This record here was an experiment that I did uh, because I wanted I had this new glittery uh, stuff that I wanted to see what it looked like in the record. Oh, this is how you take a record out of the sleeve, you know, just like this. Reach in, hand under the label. And I would also Just like, like that. to add, yeah. that's the type of sleeve you put a record in, not that piece oh, of crap yeah. paper that it comes with. Yeah, these are uh, uh, GGR exclusive rice paper sleeves uh, that we use here. They got our lo GGR's logo on them. I don't know if you can see this, but... That looks yeah, cool as fuck. It. Yeah. It's just got like this, uh, I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's what like, is, it's what like is this that? Pepper? No, man. Uh, it looks like pepper. But it's just like this flat, and when you, when I you can't see it in there, but it has like um, iridescence to it. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't really see it there in the camera. Yeah, um, camera, it's really subtle. Camera tricks always suck on records. But it's like it's probably one of my favorite ones, and I I only did this one record like this, and I haven't done it again. Um, but I'll probably get on it because I like how that one turned out. And this is a new, um, this, we just did this variant for, uh, and this record you can buy on our website right now at waxmage.com. But uh, this uh, is uh, Mike St. Jude and the Valentines. Okay. One of, uh, uh, so a record of local, local folks uh, from Cleveland. And this is the last record one of our dear friends ever played on. So I actually seen you yeah. make a post about Mike St. Jude the other day. and I was, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a... live now. It went live this morning on our website. So this variant in particular is sold out. Okay. Uh, it's called the Supernova. And uh, this is, yeah, yeah. This is it. Yeah. Lots of colors in there. Yeah. It, it turned out really well. Um, but like I said, these variants are all sold out right now but we have other ones up there uh gushers i think or maybe not gushers i forget all the things <laughs> this is a one of uh ty kramer's projects that that he wanted to work on um and this is a a variant he invent he created the the variant style the builds and then uh another press operator who just had his last day last week <clears throat> He's going into construction. Um, but uh, 
Such a downgrade. I yeah, know, man. That's what I tried to tell him. Like, what are you He's doing, like, bro? Get, he says, "I'm gonna get married and have some kids. I have to get into, you know, you know, get into a union or whatever." I was like, "You should just stay here." Yeah, ten years from now, he's gonna be back at yeah. your door, like, "Let me back in." I hope he's back here ten days from now. He's a solid, solid dude. Yeah. So he's gonna be successful in whatever he does. But uh, he's the one who uh, created the way to layer colors so that they, so that they. Played together nice in okay. that, in that, in that, very, in that, in that okay. build, so yeah. But uh, um, let's see, what else do I got? So we were talking about Wax Russell earlier, and um, he does, he has this thing where he does uh, 10 at the end, so he'll do what he calls uh, member mages. And then he does uh, gold mages. Member mages are 10 records. The gold mages are for five records. And then he does, um, we do this thing called uh, build a mage. And uh, where he does a raffle, whoever wins that raffle uh, gets to design their own custom record. Oh, damn. That's so, awesome. Nick yeah, and I is. worked together on making those, and um, and the designs are uh, pretty creative. Uh, I don't have any of those there because they are truly one-offs. But this is one of the uh, the gold mages that he had done. Damn. For one of his releases, I can't show you the. Uh, well, the other side actually is just that wax mage uh, label, but that's a wax mage label uh, that he made uh just for his wax mage releases for the it's all grindcore so it looks like an old leather couch oh. <laughs> it's an old leather couch font. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah i've seen a lot of a lot of like pages on instagram dedicated to either wax mage collecting or wax vessel or both yeah, collecting yeah. like yeah I mean, people out there, like, really hunt that shit down, which I think is awesome for you and also just really cool in general because it makes everything that more exciting when you have, like, particular variants that you're hunting down. I'm not really a variant hunter myself. Like, me, I'm just like, if Ooh. I got it, cool, I got yeah, it. Yeah, that's how but... we are. I uh, I found one of the – sometimes when I am making those one-offs the, the, for Wax Vessel, I do fail – uh, some of them, and I actually have one here that was a fail, but it was a customer request. Uh, I just messed up the letters. But there's this there's this group on Facebook called Wax Vessel People That Don't Suck. Okay. And all these kids are in, in this group, and one of the kids wanted the letters for that in the in the record. So yeah, Wax so you, and you put Vessel. The, the T and the S in the wrong people, spot. And I got, yes, <laughs> that's why I failed it. I was like, Damn. Well, I can't fucking spell. <laughs> <laughs> At least well, it wasn't a tattoo. I've, yeah, I've but seen some that of this happen. stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's messed up. Oh, shit. Is there anything that you've done that you thought was going to come out one way and it just came out like a steaming pile of shit? Yeah. <laughs> 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 That happens a lot more often than I'd like to admit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Actually, I have one of them sitting right here. <laughs> Let's see it. Uh, it was, a, again, another one of those uh, records that some guy was like, hey, can you, you know, put the constellations or whatever in in a, in a record? You know, it was like a one-off raffle thing. And I was like, yeah, and then I had this great idea on how to do it. And uh, you might not be able to tell from there. This is the one side. It looks cool as shit. It's like, yeah, even but, that. Oh, you can't kind of see it. Waxes is you see those bumps? Yeah, I see them. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. So I actually did put a piece of, like, these, this is like a map of the constellations. Yeah. In the record, but it was just too thick. So it did, it did not work out. This is an unplayable, rumbly pile of steam and shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's got the constellation. It's a learning tool. It's absolutely a learning there you tool. Go. Plus, so, it's uh, also a really cool wall decoration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the next one I made was perfect, and it had because, it in it and everything. Because I completely fucked this one up, but that's 
That's how it goes when you're doing that kind of stuff. So the pimp one had had um, the constellations in it and everything that the, that you ended up making. Yeah, it uh, it just uh, pulled apart a little more. Nice. I was trying to keep things to get a little tighter, but it just uh, pulled apart a little more. That's fucking cool. That's a good. <clears> I, <throat> I think that's a really good idea. I mean, that would look good spinning. You know what I mean? One of these cute little guys. Simple <clears throat> and sweet. Now, how do you get that cloud effect? It's a secret. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta be honest. No, you don't have uh, to tell me. I just, I just. Think I would it's love cool to tell fuck. you. I would love to you can't, take a video. No, I get it. Of how I do what I do. Um, yeah, but then somebody I've, out there would be like taking notes. Well, let me tell you what. Uh, folks are already, you know. I don't know if they're reverse engineering what I, I do, say, but they're, yeah. they're like coming up with their own ways to make really amazing records. Uh, New Orleans, uh, New Orleans record pressing. Uh, there's uh, Burlington, uh, uh, Burlington vinyl. I think it is. Um, they, they no, they just moved. And then there's uh, a third man, of course. Are they're doing some really cool stuff there? Um, Smash plastic. Uh, Smash plastic. I've yeah, heard. soft uh, soft wax. I think is another place. And there's a spot in Germany. I can't remember the name of it. And then there's uh, Dunk Records in Australia. They're just like really knocking it out of the park with oh, the shit. customs that they're doing. The beauty of that is that we're all using different machines. So the molds that I use close straight onto each other, top to bottom, like that in this kind of motion. A lot of the molds that a lot of folks are using are book molds that that's are like opening a, and closing like a book, like that. Like a so, waffle maker. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah waffle yeah. maker. So you're going to get a different effect when you have the vinyl pushing in one direction. So right. you have to right, think about that, backloading the those plates. Starts and then pushes out versus it going sure does. From the center out. Yeah. Right. So I well I can get a more um, concentric design. Some of the things that I'm seeing coming out of those book molds, I'm just like, holy shit. Because I can never do that. Shit just yeah, I can never do that. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's amazing. But, yeah. I get I get inspired by seeing the work that the other record pressing plants are doing. Um and then I'm trying to reverse engineer that. Of course people are trying to reverse engineer yeah, everyone's yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah, but if you're good at what you do, like you're always gonna be looking to everybody else to Absolutely. have some sort of spark of creativity to tie into your own thing. Like it's not yeah. It's not ripping it, off. It's just like it's inspiration. Uh, it's, it's the sincerest form of flattery. Exactly. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's I just that's a really cool that's a that's a cool press that you have there. It looks like a marble, with that fog and that green. Yeah, oh kind yeah, of like yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love doing that stuff, man. Here's a, another one that's got a it's got like an inlay in it. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, that's. Uh... Yeah, I like the 45. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can see, like, it looks yep. like, like oh, leopard print. Leopard or something. print, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, it's and it's so subtle, too. Like, you just, like, I don't know. I, I love how subtle it is, but you just pull it out of the sleeve. So, this is from a friend of mine, um, uh, Colleen Duffy, and uh, uh, she goes by Devil Doll. Uh, a lot of rockabilly, really, really cool stuff. But uh, I was happy to be able to do a 7-inch with her. Um I think those are sold out now that we did that a couple yeah. of years ago. That but. seems that should just be the the headline to your website. Yeah. Like uh, variants are sold out because it, <laughs> like cause order here. Sold most out. of the time they're like everything's gone. I mean, you guys have a pretty high demand for stuff. It seems we're trying we're we're trying to you know stay stay relevant and keep up with with everyone and um, keep making. We're trying to top ourselves every day. Yeah, so that's all you can do. Yeah. Um, and in that is training up the guys here and showing them everything that I do and then letting them go ham, get their wheels spinning. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. how all the new stuff happens. Yeah. I mean, the best way to start doing something new, like, is to just do it. I mean, you're never going to actually get good at it if you don't just do it, make some mistakes, or make some good mistakes, or just, oh, yeah. you could be happy a Happy accidents. Yeah. Happy accidents. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so outside of just the record label and the pressing plant and everything, like musically for you, what do you listen to a lot? Oh of? my gosh! Um, because it literally can be normally. Ah, oh, that's good. That's what I was normally at the end of our episodes. 
we always ask because we do a lot of band interviews but um different types of record labels and things like that too but we normally ask people like outside of their genre of music that they play what is something that they listen to that people wouldn't expect but since you're kind of all over the place i'm going to rephrase the question and just ask kind of what you're into musically definitely uh anything amel and the sniffers like i'm such a fanboy fully obsessed um but other other music that I really dig. Uh, I listen to I listen to a lot of country, man. Okay. Um, like older, I like or I would imagine older, uh, or maybe some. Yeah, all of it, all okay. of it. My friends rip on me. They're like, "Turn that fucking radio." <laughs> are you Are you a uh, oh? What's the song? There's a song that my son roll your windows down and cruise kind of guy, or are you more a, a more like country country kind of guy? I mean, I, I like some Charlie Pride. There you uh, go. Yeah, I like. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, 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 George Strait, um, uh, man, George Strait, John fucking Blanks, Toby Keith, you know what I mean? Toby like, Keith, I could never, I, I just, I don't know, he always kind of bugged me, and I get. I ate at his restaurant one time. Did you? I got a picture with but his mad cardboard props to him out. on his like forty <laughs> number one fucking hits or whatever he had. Not George I mean, Strait's the dude. Well, did no, Toby Keith have yeah, that many Toby hits? Yeah, Toby Keith too? had a lot. Because George Strait, I th- believe, is the number one selling country artist like ever. Ever, yeah. Like he's. Like, oh no, shit! I didn't know that. Yeah, because he's got like seventy fucking singles yeah. or something like that. Yeah, those he's dudes know what's huge. up. Huge. I'm not gonna lie. Rope in the Wind by Garth Brooks is probably one of my favorite records. <laughs> Garth Brooks was a good writer, man. Like, yeah, he's a good I'm, writer. I'm not big, but I know Willie country. Nelson was never a fan of him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. All that kind it's of. It's the thing. outlaws and the hats. <laughs> yep. I'm not big on country. Like when I used to drink a little more, like I would be kind of more on. It's almost like you got to have a beer for me to listen to it. Like and in, like thoroughly enjoy it yeah, i can't yeah. just like yeah. turn turn it on and be like oh, that's my jam right there like, <laughs> I gotta, like <laughs> but i do appreciate like a lot of the writing and stuff that goes into it and it's its own genre of music like oh, it, wait, it, it has my its, jam yeah we, oh, yeah we went over that yeah. guitars and cadillacs <laughs> fucking right buddy that's punk rock though to me that know? is it truly is no it really is man um, and for records in general, like, do you you have your own collection at home? Like, you're an avid collector yourself. I have been asked that question so many times. People are like, you know, what's your collection like? Are you a collector? And for a long time, I, I and in the, in the early days of you know doing interviews or chat with people, I'm like, I'm not a collector. Yeah. Uh, and then I had to sit back and look at this all of this furniture I have with records in it. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I think I am, but I just don't, I like, first of all, nothing's alphabetized or organized. Okay. I have, I have a, a copy that's just like, here's what I'm listening to now. And then another copy is just like, I like this, but not right now, but they're sort of organized by genre kind of, but not really. Um, but, I, but I know where everything is. Yeah. That's uh, how, that's how it works. And it like, in most collections mm-hmm. like it might have the most bizarre form of organization but you know where it is i know where it is except for that one anal cut record i can yeah. it's just just yeah <laughs> just swear to god that thing's got legs i don't know where to go sometimes <laughs> i'll like find i'll find it like in the bathroom i'm like what the fuck is this doing in here <laughs> yeah it's in the shower or something. i have no idea <laughs> there's not even yeah. a turntable in here <laughs> i know right <laughs> um, the most, the oddest place I've ever found it was like next to the, next to the water boiling thing on top of the microwave. I'm oh, like, that's why scary. Is this here? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, why is this here? It melt. It's like, yeah, only after tequila or something. Ooh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like who was just like, hey, here's a good spot for this. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, it does, it does look like it's just like a little, you know, business card. So it's so small. Yeah. I'll send you a picture of it. If I can that, find yeah, it. Awesome. Yeah, find <laughs> yeah. it. You can find it. Yeah. But, uh, um, I listen to like uh, I listen to soul. I listen to a lot of stuff on Coal Mine. Uh, Daptone Records is another one of my favorite um, labels. Uh, I like pop music. Uh, Caroline Rose is something I've been listening to for a while. Uh, Shayla Hope, uh, also local. I- I'm putting out her record, her second record. Uh, I just got all the parts in. So the Caroline uh, Rose or the following uh, Shayla Hope. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's actually. Uh, Let's see if I can do this right there behind me. 
Oh, right on. <laughs> Her I'm unfamiliar with, but um, Caitlin Rose, I um, she's more of a country chick too, isn't she? Oh, Caroline, Caroline Rose. Yeah, but no, also I like Caitlin Rose. Caitlin yeah, yeah. Rose, Kay- that's who. Oh, we're two I different think so. People. Yeah. Different people. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. My bad. Yeah. Um. Uh. Caroline Rose is a pop musician, but uh, who else am I listening to? Um. Brandy Carlisle. That's kind of like kind of goes between like a pop and country and folk. They call it they call it y'all alternative. Y'all alternative. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck I never is heard that? It. I never yeah, heard welcome that. to a new genre, gentlemen. <laughs> Yo, I heard I heard a new term the other day. Um, instead of ex husband, wasband. Wasband. Yeah, it's like what the <laughs> fuck? Yo, I got this yeah, word, like I was I wife was was that's like, my husband. Yeah, that's my was wife. Like people are getting <laughs> kids are getting crazy. I've always said future ex wife, but yeah, yeah. Well, husband yeah. was a good one too. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but anyways, before we wrap things up here, um, one, I want to thank you for your time, for uh, of course. your patience with the little connection issues that we had here. Also, listeners, you're going to have to deal with it. I'll edit it the best I can. But <laughs> um, And yeah, but I just, I'm happy to have gotten to talk to you, to interview you, to hear about Wax Mage. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, do you have anything you want to get off before we sign off here? Yeah, uh, if you want to support Wax Mage, uh, you can go to waxmage.com and uh, buy stuff. And um, that's the best way if, to support, right? Yeah. And uh, how do how do we support uh, noise avocation? You can go to Instagram, check us out at noise avocation. YouTube, YouTube. we just yeah. YouTube, YouTube, <laughs> fucking get on there because I've been having a trouble, a little bit of a trouble pushing that. Um, but now that we're doing full video, everybody's starting to seem to go there. So cool, cool. find us there. You can find Wax Mage, everything. I'll have you guys' Instagram, website, all that in the episode description. Awesome. So, Great. But all right, man. Um, thanks again. I really appreciate it. It's been awesome talking to you. This has been yeah, a, for sure. a real fun interview. I was really looking forward to this. Yeah, man. Cool. Uh, if you have any other questions or if you just want to, like, Shoot the shit, man. Stay in touch for sure. Will do, man. Oh, I yeah, appreciate bro. it. And I'll send All you right. pictures of the vault when I go back up front. Cool. I'll find send you some the pictures. Anal cunt. I'm gonna find <laughs> it. I'm gonna find it. <laughs> and uh, uh, drop me your uh, mailing address too. I'll send you. I'll send you all some records down there. Okay. Cool. Will do, man. Up I'll, there, right. sir. Up there. Send you. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're up northern Hell Michigan. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, man. I appreciate it. You have a uh, enjoy the rest of your night, and we'll be in touch. Will do. Take care, guys. Have a good one, man. Yeah, later.